this is a soft start. So light bulbs have a rather unique property many people are not aware of and this means that the resistance of the filament is very much dependent on the temperature it's operated at. Which means that uh, at the beginning when the lamp is off the resistance is fairly low. So when you switch your power on you have a huge surge in current because at the beginning the filament is cold and then it heats up and then the current settles to its normal operating value as the resistance gets higher here and thus the current is reduced. And this means that while the normal operating current is for example 2 amps the inrush current can be 10 times as high. And I just checked a car bulb that I had in my workshop and it actually had a resistance of just 0.2 ohms. And if you uh, define 12 volts as a supply voltage, as an operating voltage, then you get an initial current surge of about 60 amps, while the normal operating current is just 5 amps. So that's over 12 fold the normal current that you see when you just switch on the light bulb. And of course this huge current surge at the beginning is rather hard on the filament, it leads to a considerable wear and uh, this is why you should really try to reduce your inrush current to a lower value in order to make your bulbs live longer. And uh, you usually can't see you directly the time when a car bulb burns out because you are sitting in the car and you are not watching your lights from the outside when you switch them on. But in your household you will sometimes notice that a bulb burns out just as you try to switch it on. It gives a brief flash of light and then it dies. And this is because the high inrush current killed the already worn down filament. So, how can we reduce the inrush current? This is an NTC resistor. NTC, as you can read here, stands for negative temperature coefficient. And what this means is drawn in this graph and this means that the higher the temperature gets, the lower your resistance is also getting. So you have a negative correlation with temperature. The hotter it gets, the lower does its resistance get. And we can use this feature to protect our car bulbs. So, as you just learned, the car bulb has a very low resistance at the beginning. This is why the current gets so high. Well, the NTC has a very high resistance when it's cold. And if we connect both in series, then the current will have go through both the lamp and the NTC. Which means the NTC's really high resistance at the beginning will limit the inrush current surge to a really low value protecting the lamp. And as over time the NTC gets hot because the current flowing through it meets a resistance, this results in a temperature rise. So the temperature will rise and rise and rise, therefore the resistance will get so low until it doesn't matter anymore and by this time the bulb has heated up sufficiently to have itself a higher 
resistance so it just sees the normal operating current and no current surge. So this is the part you want. It's an NTC 5D minus 20. This is good for about uh, 7.5 amps continuous and as those car light bulbs only take 5 amps it has a bit of at room a bit of safety margin and you're pulling out a fuse like this and what we are trying to do is to emulate the contact shape oh, it's magnetic the contact shape of the fuse by bending the contact wires to the inside and then we squeeze it in the vise so that they get a bit flatter and a bit wider just like the contacts here and uh, the length you need this depends on the space in your fuse box uh, you shouldn't try it out you should just get it right the first time so uh, you need to involve a bit of brain work and a bit of measuring and a bit of eyeballing with the necessary precision so that you figure out the correct length of the contacts so that they just fit snugly. So you will find your related fuse box might look different than other vehicles. So this one looks like that. It could also look like this and we'll always find a kind of diagram inside the cap which says which fuse is which. We have the headlight low, low beam. This is what gets used constantly, so we are going to pull those fuses. Fuse puller. And then we are going to insert them. Relay, so there is just enough space under the cap. And the problem with NTCs is, however, that they do not act like a fuse at all. I just shorted. 12 volt battery with these pins and for a brief moment about two to four seconds the current of over 100 ampere has been measured and after that the NTC smoked and it got red hot but what burned were the wires so this one for a brief amount of time it lets, uh, lets all current pass that wants to pass so if there's a short circuit somewhere and you replace the fuse with an NTC then uh, your wires will burn in your car and uh, this is the danger if you just replace the fuse with an NTC but um, you can combine both into one part as I did here. So instead of flattening one of the NTC wires you just fold it over to the top and you solder it to your fuse and on the other side of the fuse you solder a piece of wire to which you crimp such a screw or bolt-on terminal and uh, this one is generously 
insulated with shrimp tube all the way over the contact. This contact is bare, but it shouldn't matter as it can touch no other live contacts or live metal. So what you are basically doing now is you are replacing this fuse with this fuse NTC combination so you get the best of both worlds you get a reduced startup current reduced inrush current from the NTC and you still have a fuse so if there's a short circuit somewhere in the system it uh, will blow and nothing else will be destroyed. However you can't repair this easily you have to solder in a new fuse which means that uh, for roadside repairs you just replace the whole assembly with just a spare fuse and then you don't have the startup function or the slow startup function anymore you do not have the reduced inrush current logically but just to get home it will be perfectly all right and here you can see the NTCs and the fuses both in the fuse box so this combination looked all right but it was a bit of a fail as you see the cable runs under the NTC and this means that I couldn't push it down far enough and the top protruded so much that uh, it was hard to close the lid of the relay box so I made uh, another slightly improved version so this is the slightly improved version please excuse the shoddy soldering normally I apply higher standards of workmanship in my projects but uh, I think it should work all right. So you notice that the space just under the NTC is free, so it can be pushed down all the way. What I did here, I folded this contact over to solder it on the spade contact here, and I soldered on the wire sideways so that the space directly under it is also free, so the cable can be routed around the assembly and then down where the other normal contacts sit in the fuse box. So this is how it looks in the relay box. It's rather cramped here, sandwiched the fuses and the NTCs and uh, here you can see the cable routed around the NTC and this fits snugly, it's quite alright now, I can close the lid without problems over it. However, uh, these things during operation get really hot. I checked it and it was about 150 to 160 degrees Celsius, it is rather hot. And the whole fuse box gets warm to the touch. Um, I think it will hold up alright. But when you install this, you should really uh, run your lights for like 15 minutes or so and uh, check if everything is alright and no plastic is melting. And yeah, this is just for additional safety. You should always check it before going on the road. This is the soft start. 